Now, something else very, very special and something very local. I'm putting the spotlight now on the Begg sisters from Leighton Buzzard here on BBC Three Counties Radio. Lula Beggs and her younger sister Willow both write and sing and play ukulele and guitar. And Willow also plays bass guitar. Willow and Lula were encouraged from an early age to follow their own musical paths by their musician father, Nick Beggs, who initially found fame in the 80s with the band Kajagoogoo. He's widely recognised as one of the best bass players in the world, having worked with artists such as Steve Hackett, Howard Jones, Gary Newman, Belinda Carlisle, Emma Bunton, Iona and the Steve Wilson Band. And as we'll hear, Nick also writes and performs alongside his two daughters. So Lula and Willow, welcome to the programme. Hello. <laughs> How are you today? We're yeah, excellent. Very good. I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of you. I'm excellent. And I'm you great. Excellent. I'm also great. <laughs> Willow and Lulu are both excellent, which is great. So tell us about this project, the Beggs Sisters. How long have you been sort of writing songs together and, and now performing them together? The funny thing about us is that we tend to write songs individually mm. and then we play them to each other and yeah. we just kind of create it from there. Yeah, um, each other's biggest fans. Yeah, definitely. We rarely write songs together. We yeah. just kind of write separately. I do a bit of keys here and there but it's mainly guitar ukulele yeah, for both of us definitely yeah and do you have to improve each other's songs you know and are you critical <laughs> of each other's songs honestly I think because of the fact that we are each other's biggest fans we'll send each other files and we'll do sh- kind of sharing and every time it'll be like that's incredible yeah, and then we get them. obsessed don't we yeah. over like a period of time yeah I normally I'm, message you like, oh my God, I hate your song. I yeah, can't stop listening I've to it. I've never hated one of your songs. So that's always good. You're that upfront, are you? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I listen to it all the time. It's driving me mental. <laughs> uh, what is it that inspires you to be able to write songs? Mm, I think everyday life, we talk a lot about relationships, breakups, relationships, heartache. Kind of the deeper stuff is what inspires our songwriting, I'd say. Yeah, Would and I'd agree? say you particularly, Willow, is fantastic at talking about things that are heavier subjects yeah. so you how we have one song that's like women's rights and yeah. kind of pressure on women to have children and there's that kind of element and then you have another one that's kind of about the world and global warming and yeah environmental issues, issues you know? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a, like deep stuff and some of it to. might be deeply personal and autobiographical definitely, yes yeah yeah definitely yeah kind of like confessional art in a way I yeah. Think. yeah and does it all come naturally to you you know you find it easy yeah, I think it's just, it's a part of us, isn't it? It's like, a you know, another limb. We Definitely. have to write songs in order to get through the day. It's just nice to have that creative freedom. Don't know about you, but I write a lot of stuff in my notes. If something comes to mind, I'll just be mm. <laughs> typing in my notes. Okay, queen. <laughs> <laughs> I think because of the Beg Sisters coming together and how it formed... I had a period of time where I stopped writing completely for about seven years Mm. and that was a really difficult period of my life and because of Willow and our dad I was kind of forced into just starting to write again and inspired to write again and now I'm back into this kind of routine I think that Willow is already in of kind of writing more every day and feeling inspired to write again which I didn't have for a long time so that's a huge thing that's been great for me Mm. during the Beg Sisters kind of journey. So so let's play the Beg Sisters sister's current single it's called into your heart and uh, lula this really is about a relationship willow writes about relationships and breakups i write about boys i get obsessed with or was used to get obsessed with and can't tell <laughs> <laughs> so i write songs about them and then play them to them and this was one of those <laughs> so yeah into your heart was about a boy that i just became a little bit obsessed with and didn't know how to communicate it because he was my friend so i just thought i'll write a song about it and then i'll play it to him and see how he thinks <laughs> And how did he react? He was so like, wow, oh, that's so sweet. He didn't take the offer up. (laughs) You're still friends and just friends? Uh, Just friends. (laughs) Because the final lines, the warmer I feel, the colder I am to you. Yeah, yeah. It's my um, issues with being able to be honest about my feelings. <laughs> That's pretty honest. Very honest. <laughs> Only in songwriting, though. I don't think I would have been able to do that outside of that. So, Let's hear the Beg Sisters then, and this is their current single, Into Your Heart. The warmer I feel, the colder I am. I'm turning to steel I wish I could bend to you You're just too pretty You're just too tall You make me dizzy You don't want to fall Into your Into your heart Cause I may never climb back out again Just to keep 
keep you as a friend Ignoring your gaze My eyes turn away from you Am I what you want Or are we all the same to you Like scattered diamonds To a millionaire so many to choose from all that blonde hair Into your, into your heart Cause I may never climb back out again Into your, into your heart It's better just to keep you as a friend Into your Keep you as a friend into your, into your heart. I don't want to fall back down again into your, into your heart. The warmer I feel, the colder I am. Into Your Heart by the Begg Sisters here on BBC Three Counties Radio. Willow Beggs and Lula Beggs. So that single, is that your typical sound? Folk roots and acoustic music? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, that is our sound. But there's also layers to it. You know, some of Willow's songs are a lot darker and kind of bring more kind of proggy elements yep. to the table. Whereas this one is a lot more kind of along the folky uh, route. This um, is quite light-hearted. Let's just say the rest of the songs <laughs> we'll release are going to get a lot darker. So <laughs> With a bit more instrumentation on? A bit more instrument. Yeah, I, I think so. And as we progress, I think we want to start writing a bit more prog stuff. It's slightly more proggy because our dad is quite into the prog scene and I definitely am too. So to mix genres is definitely where we're heading. Yeah, mm. and I think that Willow brings more of that darker and proggy side to her writing. I bring more of the folky, more poppy element mm-hmm. to the writing. So I think saying it is kind of just folk based. I don't know if it is just folk based. I think it's yeah. got a few layers There's to it. There's a lot of layers <laughs> going on. And a very important layer is your voices and your harmonies singing together. Yeah, definitely. Very, very strong voices, if I might say. And I guess, again, you can harmonise naturally. Mm-hmm. Can you? Yeah, I think we can. And I think a lot of people have come up to us and said, oh, because you're sisters, your harmonies just work so well together. And I think it's true. And we're very lucky that we have voices that suit so well. Yeah, definitely. And I do think there's something about being family yeah. where you just intuitively know what that person's going to do or yep. where they're going to go. And our voices just seem to fit quite nicely because of the fact that we're sisters. Yeah. A bit like first aid kit from exactly. Sweden. <laughs> Ward Thomas, Wildwood Kin although they've now just split up. And I guess the Staves from mm. Watford, yes? Mm-hmm. So are you big fans of harmony singing and those kinds of artists? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're a big fan of Joni Mitchell, as am I. Mm-hmm. Um, Imogen Heap, you know, those kind oh, of things. The layers of Imogen Heap are a huge <laughs> inspiration for me. Yeah. Laura Marling, maybe? Yeah, yeah, Laura Marling, great. Johnny Flynn, definitely very influential to us. We always say that we were kind of probably inspired slightly differently in the music that we listened to. Mm-hmm. I listen to more soul and jazz and folky stuff i kind of like indie rock foo fighters you know nirvana all that stuff is as i said she's cooler than me (laughs) (laughs) it's very up my street she's edgier and cooler than me and younger (laughs) younger. (laughs) so let's play another song we're talking to willow and lula beggs the beggs sisters 
but there is a third member who we will come on to but this is another track called Just Fine tell us about this yeah so this song I wrote in April last year and it's kind of about you know going through a breakup and knowing it's not right for the time but you wish them well and you just want them to have you know a good time in their life and this is about them you can be just fine take it from me in this life you could be The Begg Sisters here on BBC Three Counties Radio, Willow and Lula Beggs, and a song called Just Fine. Really is just fine. It is yeah, just fine. It's always just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Willow, are studying fine art. I am studying fine art at Liverpool, yes. Why not music? Do you know what? It's a question I ask myself every day. <laughs> you asked it, I think, before you went to study. I know. Do you know what? I feel like three years ago I wasn't as confident with my music. And as I reached the end of my fine art degree... I've definitely come a long way. I do kind of wish I studied music, but I also feel like I didn't need to because yeah. I, I was always going to do it in my spare time. And I love art just as passionately. So. And you go and see a lot of live music in Liverpool? Yeah, all the time. Always going to gigs. And there's a great place called the Liverpool Arts Bar and they just have random bands on all the time. So that's really cool to go and see. So, yeah. Now, Lula, mm -hmm. you're also at university, which we'll come on to, but you went to uh, Brit school, I think. <laughs> yes, I did, yeah. Which was not exactly a performing art school. They didn't sort of teach you to go into musical theatre, but they taught you quite a lot about the music industry, right? Yes, yeah, so I studied music at the Strand at, at Brit school. Yeah, they were incredible. It was a lot of teaching us about the music industry, teaching us about lots of different genres of music, history of music. My favourite was this subject called ethnomusicology, which is about world music so it was really amazing but they kind of get you ready to throw you out into the real world and uh, yeah if you want to do music as a career whatever that might look like if it's the business side or whether it's the kind of creative 
side. So you what, about 19 when you finished that course? Yeah, so yeah, about 19 and just thrown out into it. I decided not to go to uni and to just pursue music as a career full time. So, so that's what I did. So what did you do in your 20s? Music, <laughs> non-stop. <laughs> Toured, had kind of my own band, wrote music, released music did it all and now you're studying at Birkbeck <laughs> College in London yeah psychodynamic counselling yes very different <laughs> <laughs> but Is it plays a good part in the songwriting I must say <laughs> it does I'm always like psychoanalyzing what we're writing <laughs> but yeah very very different Right. So let's talk about your dad, because the world famous bass player and world famous pop star, I mm -hmm. guess, Nick Beggs, was, of course, in Kajagoogoo, had that number one 40 years ago, back oh, yeah. in 1983 with Kajagoogoo and Too Shy. He's also played with Steve Hackett, Howard Jones, Gary Newman, Belinda Carlisle, Emma Bunton, John Paul Jones, once of Led Zeppelin. He's in the Steve Wilson band, grew up, of course, in Leighton Buzzard. So tell us about what it was like growing up with him. You always had music or was he away playing live? Always had music around us. Always. Always had instruments around the house. Of course, he was away on tour a lot of the time, but just a very musical household, I'd say. Yeah. Our experiences were probably slightly different. Willow, you, you grew up around him all the time. Yes. <laughs> I only not. saw him on weekends. <laughs> but there was still a level of every single weekend I remember he'd pick me up and we'd drive to Leighton Buzzard and there would be like this next album that he was going to educate me in like Pat Metheny the whole way yeah. to Leighton Buzzard and back <laughs> and that was just kind of like my upbringing and I think for you you had it in that kind of way but more, more regularly, intense, regularly yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> Growing up did some of his pop star music friends pop round or stay the night and jam together and you saw all of that? <laughs> yeah definitely yeah, I guess we kind of did a little bit of that. Here yeah, and after the 80s, but with the 80s people, I remember going along to the, all the kind of shows and I just was there because I had to be because I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all just wonderful. Who did you see live and get to know? When I was very, very young. Mm -hmm. I was there when they re he recorded with Belinda Carlisle in LA. I mean, to me, she was just a lovely woman. So <laughs> yeah. but obviously, and when you look back on it, you're like, oh, actually, she was yeah. a very successful Kim person. Kim Wilde as well. Yeah. Kim Wilde, we spent a lot of time with Kim. So, yeah, these people were just people. Steve and Wilson were around all the time. Steve Hackett as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to think of all of them. <laughs> you weren't born, of course, when Kajagoogoo were hitting the charts, but you will be familiar with their work, or was he a bit modest and even shy in playing you his back catalogue oh, from that no, era? We know it all. We know it all. <laughs> I'd say we are like big fans and he hates it yeah <laughs> we're big fans he hates how much we love it we love the goo particularly the kadja stuff i just think was insane oh, that's amazing again like biggest fans yeah. i mean some of those like hidden tracks yeah that weren't like the top singles yeah. they're the ones they where you're ones. like nick begs those bass lines <laughs> are slaying yeah. <laughs> well i saw the howard jones acoustic trio last year oh, yeah. yes and of course he was playing <laughs> bass and they played yeah. too shy yeah. and howard jones was great in saying this was an amazing bass line yes. just on that which it is it, it is. really is everything we release he plays double bass on yeah so. and does he play with you in all your live gigs too yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so we are the three big sisters he He's is just the ugly one <laughs> i would say the beautiful one actually <laughs> he's, he's the, the blonde one. leggy blonde in the background <laughs> that everyone's looking at <laughs> <laughs> well, let's play another song. And Willow, you wrote this for a friend of yours who last year struggled massively with her mental health and you wanted to help her realise that she's not alone. This is called Sarah.
I think that's absolutely brilliant. The Beg Sisters here on BBC Three Counties Radio and a song called Sarah, featuring my two guests, Lula and Willow Beggs, and also their dad, Nick Beggs, on the double bass. So what's it like having your dad on stage? It's just incredible to watch. I mean, we're quite used to it because we've been brought up around it. But when I think the older we've gotten, we've been like, this is actually really cool. Like Our dad's performing in front of all of these people. It's amazing. Yeah, I think you appreciate it more as you get older. But yeah, it's just part of our lives. So it's just kind of... And he's much in demand though still, isn't he? Very much so. Yeah, 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 all the time. He's a busy man. How Uh, could he not be? (laughs) uh, And again, he's pretty modest because I saw some kind of chart that was published about the best bass players, I think in the world, and Mm -hmm. he came number two. Yes. And he refuted that. He said, I'm not even the best bass player in Lazy (laughs) Music. Yeah, he's very modest. Very, very modest, yeah. So were you both playing instruments and the guitar, you know, at a very young age, encouraged by your dad? We didn't really play together when we were younger. I picked up ukulele when I was, like, 13, and I didn't pick up playing bass until I was, like, 17. He didn't ever push it on us, No, I would say. I never felt pushed. If anything, he was always very realistic with me, particularly around this as a career choice. Mm. So when I was 19 and left Brit school and was like, right, I'm doing this as a career, he was always very supportive, but was also very realistic with me of this is what this might look like are you ready for that yeah I think I just picked it up on my own and now I think that we're in a band together we are having the opportunity to experience this kind of side of him of more business Mm -hmm. and kind of music and he's being able to kind of say this is what I think and that's really lovely to do together as a three we have never done that before no very I've learned a lot from him he's like my music teacher so that's fun yeah (laughs) yeah, when we rehearse together we're always learning from him Yeah. yeah he's brilliant like he his ear for things is just absurd yeah he's very very passionate about music it's his number one thing and he's just so thrilled that he's able to be in this band with us he says it's just like the best thing in the world so well that's just wonderful isn't it and the beg sisters are playing live at the end of the month on saturday january the 28th at the stables in milton Keynes in stage two quite a small venue and it's already sold out a local gig how do you feel about that yes. oh it's incredible yeah, yeah. insane I, think. I mean what like 80 people or like 90, 85 yeah. i think 85 yeah. they might be able to squeeze it up to 100 hopefully yeah. <laughs> i mean it's amazing it's our first show together really headline headlining yeah we played one gig supporting marillion at brighton dome 
but that was like a half an hour set so yeah. we've had to pull everything together in time for this and I just can't believe it's sold out it's just madness yeah it's crazy <laughs> tell us about that uh, Marillion gig last September I think at the Brighton Dome mm-hmm. that's a big venue isn't it yeah it was amazing it was yeah it? it was probably the best experience of my life I don't know about <laughs> yeah. you but it was incredible yeah just to look out and see you know that space I thought it went really well. well. It went really well. <laughs> Obviously, you doubt yourself afterwards. You're like, oh, did it go well? But I think we did a good job. Yeah. And we only had like one rehearsal together yeah. because obviously Willow being in Liverpool and me being in kind of London, more based, it was so hard to try yeah. and get together. But we did it. And it we was a it challenge, together. but we did it. So, And I think it went really well. Yeah. They were really lovely and just so up for what we were doing. And obviously, we're a very different sound to them. But I think... From the audience, they took it really well. They seemed to like us. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah, it was so lovely of them to offer that opportunity to us. And yeah, I've definitely felt so supported. Yeah, you know, wanting new music, encouraging new music, and new artists that are kind of mm. coming up. There were moments you could hear a pin drop. They were yeah. so, so focused and silent. You can do tours of pubs and bars and pubs and all these things, and people talk and chat. And they were just so focused into what we were doing. Yeah. They were an incredible audience. It's been fantastic talking to you and hearing uh, your stories. We've been talking to the Beggs sisters, Willow and Lula, and you can see them play, well, if there are one or two returns or maybe extra tickets issued for their performance at the Stable Stage 2 on Saturday the 28th of January at 8.45. If you can't get to that, then you can maybe see them at Uckfield in Sussex. You're playing at a venue called Trading Boundaries on the 18th of March. Two founding members of Genesis, Mike Rutherford, no less, and Arthur Phillips are playing there. There's also going to be a rock opera performed, I think, the Circus of Wire Dolls. Do you know anything about that? No, I actually don't know a lot of information on that. I just, we've kind of been thrown into it blindly, haven't we? I can't wait. (laughs) I'm ready to listen to all of them. It's the (laughs) same. And then Headingham Castle in Essex on the 1st of April, I think. Indeed, Mm -hmm. yeah. So obviously you're both studying still. You link up, though, what, by Zoom most days? you say yeah but via facetime things like that because it's hard to be with each other when we're in different places to share ideas to share ideas yeah and we're texting all the time and voice noting constantly (laughs) i'll facetime willow just like hey can you have a little zoom with me later and yes sharing files Mm -hmm. and we're looking to do a uk tour hopefully around autumn and support Steve Hackett or Marillion or if Howard would, Jones. If they would take us, we'd be us. very happy. <laughs> <laughs> but not sure about that yet. <laughs> well, I wish you well. It's been, as I say, an absolute pleasure of, uh, talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Thank for you. having Lula us. And Willow. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. There we go. That's uh, Lula and Willow. Beggs on BBC Three Counties Radio. How fantastic was that? I enjoyed their music and uh, lovely chat. Nick Beggs, those bass lines. He was slaying them. And uh, wow, what a close family it seems. As I say, you can try to get tickets from the stables.org, their website in stage two. They're appearing there on Saturday, the 28th of January, at the end of this month. I can't go because I'm going to be in the Big Sur Auditorium that night to see Welsh singer-songwriter Martin Joseph, who's in the Jim Marshall Auditorium on the same night. Might be able to sneak in, though, a bit during the interval of that one. And if you like the single that uh, we play by the Beg Sisters, Into Your Heart, that's available to download on all of the usual streaming platforms.